And, and I'm very honored to, to help kick off your legislative conference. Uh, we, we are absolutely uh, critical stakeholders, uh, I would offer, for one another. Uh, and CBP is very excited to continue our engagement and partnership uh, with AAAE and, and, and ACI. Uh, there is, there's no question, uh, as, as I think Bill just outlined as well, that we've got a lot of work to do uh, together in, in the coming months. Um, the, the part that I'll focus on, obviously, at CBP is the international uh, travel piece, uh, both inbound and, obviously, uh, in, in the coming months, outbound as well. Uh, and, and as I take a look at where we stand at our challenges and opportunities over the coming months, I think there's, there's two constants that, that have really emerged in our shared environment uh, over the past five years. Uh, first, uh, tremendous growth. It remains a central feature. Uh, in international aviation to and from the United States, uh, which is obviously great uh, for your industry, great for the U.S. economy, uh, but, but a challenge in terms of volumes. Uh, and second, uh, as, as we'll probably want to talk about, and I'm, I'm happy uh, to, to do some questions and answers at the end of, of the, the dialogue here, uh, the security threat uh, remains, uh, remains present and significant. Uh, on that first point, I always bring my data, I'm sorry, uh, but I, I have to just remark that, that international air travel with the almost 120 million arrivals that we saw last year uh, has grown 36 percent since 2009. Uh, we, we've seen that 4 to 5 percent a year growth each year, uh, and last year uh, a modern record of 6 percent uh, in FY 2016 over FY 2015. Uh, additionally, you've probably seen a lot in the news about travel is down. I don't know if you're experiencing that in your environments, but in the international side, we're, we're actually up 4% in the first four months uh, of fiscal year 17 as well. So we, we've seen no drop off uh, in international uh, arrivals. Uh, and so this is, this is obviously a tremendous boon uh, to the economy, but, but pr places a lot of pressure uh, on our respective organizations and business processes. Uh, on that second point, we have continued to see terrorist organizations maintain a singular focus on commercial aviation, uh, whether it's the Metrojet attacks, the attempt in Somalia, the attacks on airports themselves uh, in Brussels and Istanbul, which I know uh, are stark challenges from this group's perspective. We, we don't see the threat diminishing or the target changing. Uh, and I think the TSA advisory uh, announced uh, this week uh, underscores that point. And so while the challenges are significant, uh, I believe that with the partnership that we've built together uh, with you and your industry, with partners like TSA, with foreign governments, that we're well positioned uh, to take on these challenges. Uh, and I think that we've, in the, in the last five years together, the airports represented here, along with CBP and DHS more broadly, have done some incredible things together. Uh, I think that working together, we can really accelerate that, that innovation effort uh, and create a partnership where uh, the travel industry brings benefits across uh, the board, whether it's for the passengers themselves, the airports, the airlines, uh, or the security and border agencies uh, that are seeking to, to provide that security to, to travel and to the American people as they, they come through. Uh, I base this confidence on demonstrated results uh, that we've achieved together. Uh, so over the past several years, we've been successful in launching and delivering or, or significantly advancing uh, innovations with both increased passenger convenience and security, and, and we've done it together. H here are some accomplishments that I, I'd like to highlight. Uh, th this is one of my favorite stats because I, I think it's so dramatic, uh, and it was done really with the investment and partnership uh, of airports represented in this room, it is our, our transformation using technology. Uh, one of the, the signature things that we've developed to, to speed the arrival, to enhance the security, uh, and to, to reduce wait times is having travelers interact with technology uh, as opposed to having the entire administrative process of an arrival be done by an officer. Uh, in 2013, only 3% of our air arrivals interacted with uh, technology. Our, our global entry members at that point were about 3% a day of international arrivals. Uh, at, at the end of 2016, we were annualizing at 65 percent of inbound travelers interacting with technology. At some airports, we're up 75 percent or more. Uh, and that's growth of global entry, which you've invested in. It's the automated passport control, which would not exist uh, without our airport partners. Uh, and the increase now in mobile passport control. 
Uh, and so I'd like to highlight just within those programs, because you know, a lot of people think, hey, global entry, now, that's been around a while, uh, you know, not much is happening with that. Actually, global entry use grew 27% last year, uh, e even over a, a very strong and, and, and continuing base. Uh, the automated passport control kiosk, they grew another 31% uh, last year uh, after the huge investments that this industry made in 14 and 15 in that technology. Uh, and of course, on the mobile side, uh, partnering very closely with ACI, uh, we grew over a thousand percent in terms of using smartphones to help with that process upon arrival. Uh, so, so this means that amidst all that passenger volume growth, with your investment, with your partnership, we've been able to reduce wait times nationally while accommodating these tremendous volume growth and enhancing security. Uh, I think we think we should be proud of that uh, together. And what's striking to me is that these successes come from innovation and collaboration across various organizations. It, government can't possibly do it alone. Uh, the airports are critical to the process, but we need that buy-in from air carriers. We need buy-in from foreign governments uh, to sign agreements with us for trusted travelers uh, to expand preclearance. It's that entire continuum working together that's going to make the impact that we need to make. So in that light, I would offer that even though we face a challenging environment, we're also in a unique moment with a convergence of policy and program opportunities like preclearance expansion and technology innovations like real-time, affordable, facial biometrics, and cloud architecture, which we can use to fuel travel transformation together. Uh, and with the enthusiasm and support uh, of leaders like yourselves and, and a commitment uh, to do better together, uh, we're really collectively in a position, I believe, to make significant improvements to the traveler experience beyond the achievements that I outlined uh, from the past five years. Uh, one of those areas, and, and I'll outline three that, that I'll focus on today before the questions and answers, is we're making substantial progress in biometric entry and exit. Uh, our initial pilots have demonstrated the technological feasibility, uh, and they show a path towards implementation in a way that doesn't dramatically impact airport infrastructure and won't slow down the business processes of our air carrier partners. Those are our commitments. We have to find a way to do this within your facilities and within the, the air carrier processes. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the growth of preclearance and the continued interest in investing in travel opportunities to the United States, uh, which we have found strong support from our domestic airport partners. Uh, and then uh, thirdly, I want to talk a little bit about our Silicon Valley initiative. Uh, where we're trying to access the latest thinking from startups uh, to apply commercial technology to this environment that moves so quickly, we want to keep up uh, with, with the cutting edge technology and apply it to our CBP mission uh, to include travel innovation. Uh, so there's some significant things happening. I want to talk about them individually. Uh, talking with, with uh, Stephanie Gupta on the way in, probably one of the areas that is most uh, front and center for, for airports is what is CBP doing, what is the government going to do uh, with biometric entry and exit? Uh, I, I think it was Carl that alluded to the flurry of activity in Washington, and uh, CBP has been involved in some of that flurry, as you might have noticed. Uh, and, and one of the things that was included in the key presidential executive order on border security uh, was, a, was a very strong direction uh, to enhance and accelerate the development uh, of our, our biometric exit system. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to drive toward that mandate. Uh, we have support and funding from Congress in, in a, in a fee-based process, uh, but we're going to also need to continue to partner with airports and air carriers to get it done. So as you know, CBP has a standard set of information about the traveler from airlines and we have significant internal government data that we've collected from prior encounters with, with individual travelers. So our goal is to definitively confirm a traveler's identity in a secure manner and send them on their way uh, without slowing them down in the process. Uh, biometrics, especially the, the facial recognition that we're piloting, is going to facilitate that process. Uh, we're trying to build this ecosystem, if you will, to drive automation and innovation off our biometric platform for secure and efficient traveler experience uh, throughout the entire airport. Uh, before we can really build this transformational platform, we need to make sure the technology is ready for prime time. Uh, and that's, that's what these pilots are about. Uh, the, the biometric exit test that we really started a couple of years ago, but have accelerated into a real-time operational environment uh, starting at Atlanta-Hartsfield-Jackson uh, Airport uh, this past year. 
Uh, we want to do six to seven additional pilots with different carriers in different airport environments around the country uh, to, to test this process uh, to ensure the algorithms that we're using to compare facial images uh, and to ensure that the connections between an airport environment and our CBP systems are as fast and effective uh, as possible before we seek to operationalize it and expand it. So these lessons learned are being fully analyzed from Atlanta right now. We're using that to fine tune the additional pilots we seek to implement. Uh, but based on those preliminary successes, uh, we believe that, that creating a traveler verification service to be housed in the cloud, right uh, technologically near uh, the point of the gates where we're doing the checks, is gonna be a fast and efficient way uh, to confirm identity that's acceptable to travelers. Uh, really, it's just part of the boarding process to pause for a second, have an image taken, compared to images that are already on file, and then the boarding continues. Uh, we think it might even help our air carrier partners uh, with their boarding process at the end of the day. Uh, so we are, we are excited about what we've learned so far uh, and moving forward uh, with, with, the, with those tests. Uh, importantly, I want to make sure for this group that we're not forgetting that there's an entry in entry exit uh, and that these lessons can apply back to our inbound environment in, in what we think is a, is a pretty dynamic and effective way. Uh, we want to start this with our, our, our flagship trusted traveler program, Global Entry. Uh, and, and if the facial recognition uh, is so successful on the outbound exit, we want to use it to avoid the need for a, a traveler to scan a passport on inbound. Keep the passport in your pocket. We'll use your face uh, as a confirmation of who you are. And, and we want to start with global entry to continue to differentiate that program and the benefits for our travelers and, and users uh, of providing us the information in advance and, and working with the government uh, to, to join the program. So, We'd like to see an environment where uh, having to show your passport every time you cross our border is not necessary, uh, where, where we know who you are based on your face, uh, based on that quick check as you walk through a process uh, and move right on to, to engaging with an officer. Uh, so to do all of this, we need to integrate our efforts underway, both by government, air carriers, and airports, uh, because we don't want to build a, a process where solutions are not interoperable. Uh, and you can ask my good friend Gary Rascott tomorrow when he comes to speak to you how, how TSA and CBP are working on this. Uh, because we want any innovations that we build in the outbound process to also work for TSA at their checkpoints uh, to help with that ID check and process uh, through uh, the TSA checkpoints starting with international travel. So let me talk a little bit about another core program uh, that facilitates a traveler experience, preclearance. Um, we've talked a lot about preclearance. I, I might uh, be the biggest advocate uh, for the program uh, globally. If, if Dublin Airport ha is pretty close, though, uh, because uh, they, they are so happy with the, the benefits it's provided in terms of their growth uh, and the product they provide to their travelers. Uh, but bottom line is it's a more effective way to do international travel. Uh, you can use that time at arriving at an airport before you board your aircraft to complete your international uh, arrivals process with the U.S. Uh, so that when you land, you can go directly to your destination or to a transfer flight. Uh, passengers coming through Dublin spend about 50% less time waiting uh, in their total process than they would upon arrival at a U.S. port of entry. Uh, so we, we've seen uh, passengers voting with their, their business. Uh, we've seen tremendous growth in traffic. Uh, from our preclearance locations, uh, Dublin and Abu Dhabi uh, being, being signal examples. Uh, and we're excited about the, the fact that our domestic airport partners, uh, many represented here, recognize the potential uh, of benefits from preclearance and increasing your flexibility in how you use your facilities, how you use your gates. Uh, there's, there's a lot of communication that's going to be required, a lot of challenges, some upfront notification when we expect new preclearance flights to be added. But we think ultimately it will, it will increase your flexibility on the domestic side as well. Uh, so we have operations active in 15 airports in six countries, uh, but we, we are pursuing right now uh, negotiations with a total of 21 uh, additional airports uh, in, in over 15 countries. We signed two agreements last year. Uh, we're working toward operationalizing those agreements, uh, and we expect continued progress uh, not only with Europe, uh, but now adding the Americas uh, and, of course, our, our continued efforts with the government of Japan. Uh, so we're pretty excited about the potential for preclearance to continue to open up capacity 
uh, and drive access uh, to the United States for international travelers. And we look forward to continuing our dialogue with all of you on those efforts. Uh, and then the third area I wanted to highlight is, is over the past year, uh, CBP's focus on engaging with the technology innovation community, getting those startup companies, whether they're in Silicon Valley or, or Boston or Austin, all, all around the countries that, that, that have these innovative ideas and helping them bring them to our, our CBP mission space. Uh, we're, we're doing that not only in the airport environment, we're looking at it in terms of our border patrol efforts, uh, the, the ability to support our officers and agents in the field, uh, and we're starting to deliver. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm proudest of in the last five years is the speed that, with which we achieved the automated passport control uh, development. That was because we worked at your pace instead of at government pace. Uh, you were able to define the technologies uh, and work on the procurement side. We would never have been able to do it as quickly as, as a solely government program. That's, we're trying to replicate that with Silicon Valley by using innovative procurement authorities uh, to go from an idea to contract in less than six months. Uh, and so far we've been successful. We've got seven contracts ongoing. Uh, and these, these projects and funding and opportunities will be uh, woven in uh, to our entry, exit, and trusted traveler programs and build on our already robust innovation efforts. Uh, the real key to success uh, for us is being able to partner with these startups uh, but align them with airport and air carrier partners uh, so that they can, they, we can welcome them into our ecosystem and we're not developing ideas in a vacuum, but it connects uh, to the work that we want to do. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, they, they, you could, you could uh, work with them directly as customers uh, because we don't want to be the middleman because we've seen how much faster you can work uh, than, than government can work. Uh, so we're looking to build a coalition of airports and airlines who are interested in working with us, working with the startup community to embrace this kind of innovation. Uh, and I just wanted to open that, that invitation uh, today uh, uh, with, our, with our commercial technology innovation program at, at CBP. So as I've said multiple times in this, this dialogue, and, and hopefully we can get some good questions uh, going, uh, we can't do this without you. Uh, so we need to be a good business partner. We understand that you operate in a world of customer satisfaction. You have profits and loss. You have boards of directors to answer to. Uh, and we need to make sure that we are giving you the tools uh, to succeed working with us. Uh, on that note, uh, the airport technical design standards, which I know you were going to ask about, uh, are in final review uh, within CBP uh, with, with input of many of the airports present today. Uh, CBP, and I'm getting laughed at uh, by the front table, by the way. Um, C CBP appreciates your help, uh, and we hope to have the new version published very soon, uh, targeting this spring. Critically, it will capture the innovations that we have jointly worked on to date, uh, but also, and we've heard you on this, provide the flexibility for tailoring to your unique traffic and unique facility needs. Uh, we're not going to have a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, we also are trying to build in an innovation loop. Uh, so when we adopt a new program that works, we don't have to wait six, seven years for new technical design standards to come out that are fully baked. We can have a much more robust uh, revision process. Uh, so so that's, that's coming soon. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, happy to address our, our hiring efforts. Uh, I know this continues to be a topic of high interest and concern for our airport and air carrier partners. Uh, I, I do want to tell you that the good news is that right now the top 20 airports uh, are staffed at 97 percent of their authorized level. Some are over 100 percent uh, in areas where, uh, you know, we were able to, to overhire a couple of years ago to, to try to get to the right balance. Uh, and we remain committed to ensuring our staffing needs are met. Uh, and are working with the administration and Congress on several policy initiatives and incentives uh, to give our hiring a boost and to ensure that we can retain the tremendous individuals that we've invested in, that we've trained, that we've polygraphed and we've brought on board uh, the, the last several years. Uh, so, so we have some initiatives that are, that are being considered by the, by the administration uh, and also already underway on the Hill, uh, some legislative opportunities that will increase access uh, to a CBP career. Uh, and, and happy to speak to some of those issues. Uh, so bottom line is, is I think the timing remains ideal for transformational innovation 
uh, and the travel experience. Uh, we have some ideas on the CBP side. We've got some meaningful funding. But most importantly, we have the partnerships uh, with, with you, the air carriers, and, and our foreign partners. Uh, the, the challenge is in taking and using this opportunity and momentum to do something big, something different, uh, rather than settling for just the incremental changes, uh, which are good enough. Uh, we, we've transformed with the APCs. Uh, we need another transformational leap, I think, in the next three years if we're going to keep up with your, your industry's growth. Uh, so I think we can, we can do that uh, working together. Uh, I can promise you that if you come to us with an idea, we'll, we'll consider it. Uh, we don't want to react uh, like a government bureaucracy would typically react. We want to react like a business partner uh, who's willing to, to roll up our sleeves uh, and, and take on those challenges and those new ideas with you. Uh, so uh, hold, us, hold us to account. Are, are we being uh, entrepreneurial and responsive or, or are we slow uh, and glacial? I, I want to know and, and I want uh, to, to address it if, if not. So uh, with that note, uh, and hopefully people are, are, are uh, done uh, with the main course, uh, would, would love to, to engage uh, on some questions and answers uh, and, and talk through things with you. Thanks.